Hey there, I'm Gary. I'm Michael. I'm John. And you're listening to the Infinity Effect Podcast. Welcome everybody. Welcome to this episode of the Infinity Effect. Uh, great to have you joining us from wherever you're joining us, whether you're uh, here in lovely Melbourne, Australia, or you're halfway across the world. It's such a pleasure to have you here. And uh, it's also a pleasure to have Mike and Gary back in the, uh, in the studio with us uh, today after a fair bit of travel. Yeah, I was here last week then. Yeah, you were. (laughs) You were here, and then you went. (laughs) Yes, I am back after a three-week trip in Europe, so it was amazing. But yeah, uh, yeah, raring to go. Yeah, love it, love it. What were some of the highlights, Gary? Uh, I mean, if anyone's been in Europe before, I mean, the amount of history that Europe has um, and learning about the, the history where a lot of emperors and kings and just the, the feats of, uh, that they had to go through uh, is just unbelievable. Yeah, it's something that uh, for us here in Australia in particular, because we're such a young country, mm. like we, we don't really get that. We don't get it. But when you travel over there, wow, like the depth of the history, hey? Uh, so amazing people in history. I mean, Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, uh, some of the, you know, Louis the Louis the Fourteenth, what he what he produced in and achieved in France. I mean, it's just just unbelievable. Yeah, outstanding. Was it your first trip to to Europe, Gary? It was. Yeah. What about you, Mike? Where were you I, <laughs> last I, week? I, last hey. week, I, I I was here last week. We did the uh, we did yeah. The I know. Concert. I know but you prior, were here for that prior, day. <laughs> prior to that, uh, I actually had a family holiday myself. There mate. we go. I was away um, since we started. You know, Lime Property Group and Infinity Effect hadn't been away with the family. You know, we're probably what six months in, whatever it is. And it was awesome to really spend some time with. Um, my girls, my wife, um, and some close friends that we have over the years. We hired a, a pretty big house and a, a log cabin sort of down near Wilson's Prom. And it was awesome. It was awesome just to chill out, um, some nice food, some nice drinking, but just some quality time with my family, with my girls. Uh, saw a massive tiger snake. Uh, are, you, are you afraid of snakes? I'm not. I'm not. I actually walked towards it and I got yells in the background going, run away. And I'm yeah, like, that thing no, will no. kill you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't know it was a tiger snake. I, I, I didn't know it was a tiger snake until I got close enough to see that it was a tiger snake. Um, but it was funny because I was just, it was a massive yard that we were on, a, a massive um, sort of acreage. And the snake, I didn't see it. I was walking around barefoot. It was a nice day. I was walking around bare feet. Um, saw the snake and then it wriggled and I went, oh, hello. Um, but I, I sort of walked towards it because I wanted to see it. And, and I'm going, hey, look at this, there's a snake here. Um, and everyone's going, uh, run away, turn around and walk away. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, all right, all right. Anyway, so I took a photo, but yeah, it was a, a, we identified it as a tiger snake. Yeah, but, nice. But all that said, no, it wasn't about the tiger snake. It was, it was about quality time with the family. And um, strongly recommend it. Strongly recommend, you know. Now and again, you need to put in some time and effort back into your your loved ones who support you through these journeys that you go on in life. You know, we, we're working hard in our business, um, doing a lot of travel, but um, it is well worth the effort and energy to put some time back into the loved ones and the people that are supporting you through this journey. 110%, man. Like, you know, the, the energy to be able to keep moving forward oftentimes comes through recharging the emotional bank. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and if we... If we have uh, really stable environments where we're able to, um, yeah, charge ourselves up with let's, let's call it for what it is, it's it's a sensation of being loved. You know, it's mm. it's the awareness of being loved. When we're able to charge ourselves up in in a steady environment like that, we can face just about any sort of challenge or conflict externally because we're already uh, we've already banked enough currency within. Uh, within that environment and within ourselves that this other stuff is manageable. But when we're completely depleted in that area mm. and then we're faced with challenge and we're faced with conflict, mate, it's a completely different story. People people fall apart over sure. it. It's also, I've been away for three weeks and I spent that, that whole time with, with my partner. And that was the first time that I got to spend with her you know, away for quite some time. And it's amazing when you do take it out, take yourself out of your normal day to day environment, where you got the pressures and work and family and school and everything else that goes on with it, shopping and all the the normal day to day stuff. And you put yourself into an environment where you do whatever you want. It's your time now, 
There's nothing else that is distracting you. It's amazing the interaction and the the experiences that you get because of of what the environment you you're experiencing at that moment, or and, what what it is that you're creating in that moment. Mm. Uh, because there's nothing quite like being present to your partner. You know, like a lot of people fall into um, into the the trap, and it's an easy trap to fall into where they're like ships in the night they pass each other hmm. in, in the oh, corridors yeah. or in the in the communal areas in the kitchen in the in the living area whatever um, and they're doing life together but they're not necessarily sharing life together mm-hmm. and so the quality of the presence is low quality and then they wonder why it is that their relationships don't quite work out which is like retrospectively if you look at it and Anthony Robbins talks about this. He's like, well, if you treated your partner the same way you treated them when you first met, then the relationship would never go stale. But people start to take each other for granted. And so it's an incredibly important reminder. And I've also read about this, um, like the most successful people in business throughout the, the world attribute a lot of their success to having a stable home environment. Right, because they, they, their headspace isn't occupied with a bunch of like uh, emotional um, challenges that is then leading and impacting upon their ability to think clearly within the business context. So one of the greatest areas that somebody can work upon in, in order to become successful across like the entire spectrum is work on your relationship with your partner. Because if you can if you can really nail that and you can really learn to how to how to be present there for them, then they'll be present there for you also. Mm. Yeah, well, I, great insight there. Yeah, I love that. Uh, interestingly, if I may share, um, share the time with your partner or work on the time with your partner, all the things that your partner values. Reason I, I say that, that is that. is because I spent. I have to admit, on this holiday, the, the few days that I was away, I actually probably spent 80% of the time with my kids, like two girls, as opposed to my partner. But interestingly, when we got back, she was very open in saying, I loved how you, much time you spent with the girls. Yeah. Um, so there was a clear correlation in her mind to say, you're valuing what I value and you're spending time with our family, which yeah. is her, any, which is my partner anyway, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but it was it was... I sensed that it was more important for her to see me spending time with my girls than spending time with her because it was that connection with family. Um, so, yeah, I totally agree with your partner, but also whether it's family or, or whatever's important to those significant people in your life, yep. um, investing time into that uh, will reap the rewards as well. Yeah, I dig that. I dig, I dig what you're sharing there, Mike, <coughs> because in particular, um, when you've got a young family, like it, it really is a partnership effort mm. in order to raise that young family. Um, and I, I'll be the first to put my hand up. Like my wife does way more than what I do with our, our girls. Um, but she sees and acknowledges the equality of the interaction with our, our girls. And like you've said, that in itself builds like massive mm. equity in the yeah. relationship. Gary, your, your kids are a bit older than ours. Yes, they are a little bit. Yeah, my kids are be seventeen and twenty shortly uh, in a few months. So yeah, they're a little bit different. But coming back to your point about partnership and and you know uh, supporting your partner, it's the same. It's the same throughout your whole relationship. It doesn't ever change. It it should always continue that that standard that you set with your relationship at the at the beginning when you you're raising your, your young kids should continue moving forward because. We as individuals need that support throughout our whole lifetime. And it's important that you do devote the time. And, and as you mentioned, Michael, you do devote the time that va- they value. So when I was on my trip, I, you know, I'm not a big person that go to museums or you know, art galleries and all of that, but my partner is. And I devote a lot of my time while I was over there to go and visit this. And not just to visit, but also put myself in that position to un- really understand why, you know, mm. what's important there, you know, why that, that artist or that sculpture or whatever it is, uh, because it was really important to her. And she valued it massively. She was like, oh my God, can't believe you went on so many, yeah. so many tours and did this and did that. And I said, yeah, well, that's, that's because it was important to you. And in turn, 
it creates more time for me because she will support what I do yeah. and it give me back time of what, so I can devote the time to us, business, whatever else I want to do. Yeah, it's so true. <laughs> one, of, one of the mentors that I had a while back uh, shared some insight in around this. He said that um, when, you, when you invest time and effort in what it is that your partner values, the, 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 the currency, it, it increases, but it also has a shelf life. Right, <laughs> can't so, bank it forever. Yeah, you can't <laughs> bank it forever. Exactly. So, like, it depletes after, and like, uh, you know, I think he was kind of kidding because it was like a bit of a joking remark. But he was like, you know, within seventy-two hours, you, you kind of got to be putting back in a little bit more. Because <laughs> he says, you know, conveniently, they forget about how much you just you, you did for them in that period of time after maybe a week or so. I don't know. Um, but yeah, look. Totally, uh, totally agree with you, Gaza. It does free, it does free up our time because then all of a sudden, there's there's definitely more support there. And having having a couple of young kids in and around the the home, um, one I've got a six year old who's currently in school. She's she's doing prep. Um, I've been I've been watching and examining and observing how, how she's been navigating the school environment. You know, she's just in a public school presently. It's not anything uh, outside the norm for most kids to to be introduced into the educational system the way that it currently is. I know that Mike, you've got a couple of uh, young girls, and um, yeah. uh, they they attend a like an alternate school. They used to, no, oh, not anymore. They used to, they used to. Okay. yeah, yeah. Before they started school, um, they went to a, an alternate sort of um, learning environment, learning environment, which is more nature based and natural mother nature as yeah. they call it yeah uh, but now no they're in the the standard schooling system now so um yeah yeah so. so so as i've been observing emily in her school environment um or like not necessarily in the school environment but as a result of her introduction into schooling it started started getting me thinking about education in general um whether it's the education that we receive within schooling or outside of schooling how important that is as an attribution to the success that we accomplish within life. Um, and as I've been thinking about it, you know, how Facebook somehow seems to come up with these, like, <laughs> videos and pieces, whatever. I swear it's listening on the phone all the time, yeah. right? Um, anyway, so Jay Shetty put out this uh, this vid, um, and, it, and it had this little role play there where there was a parent teacher interview that was going on it had uh, like these parents with their with the the teacher and the teacher was speaking about the the young son's progress and he would have been a primary school student i, I assume from the imagery that that was shared um and and basically the teacher was was um providing feedback that was really limiting and restricting it was like hey you know, young Tommy's not that bright, you know, he's falling behind, he's well behind the rest of the class. And let's face it, um, you know, he's he's not cutting the grade. Um, and then the parents were interjecting and being like, yeah, but he really enjoys art and, and he's very, very bright in that capacity. And then the teacher was like, well, yeah, we all know that art doesn't pay the bills. And you could see how the parents were... Um, being affected by what the teacher was saying, but worse still was that the young boy was in the background and overhearing the conversation. Uh, and it and it threw me back to my own schooling days, where it was like trying to fit a round peg in a square hole or a square peg in a round hole. You know, it just doesn't quite work. Um, and I, th- I thought I'd just yeah, I thought we we could have a bit of a conversation or a discussion in and around. Um, the conditioning that happens to kids early on in the piece versus what it's like in the real world out the other end of the educational model. I guess, look, we personally went you know, through school, um, I, I actually struggled. So not to struggle to study, but I, I actually struggled to find uh, the direction as to what, what education was going to provide for me in terms of a career or life or whatever it was because I didn't really know where I wanted to go. Yeah, and and in that, did you did you feel that there was just context that was missing in the subjects that were being provided? Like you had to study this stuff, but why? Well, I mean, if if I reflect back on it now, uh, the subjects that I learnt at school, I've probably 
I probably use about 10-15% of the knowledge that you know I actually studied mm-hmm. moving forward so it's something that you know, our education is and the schooling system at the moment is, is something that I guess creates a foundation for our children to mm-hmm. but it's not the solution for careers or for people because I, I think that's a misconception where they need to really understand what they want to achieve and then go out and really experience and and learn the other things, the, the other part of life, um, not the schooling system, because that, that will provide you how to, how to count, how to read, how to write, those the basics of life, but everything else really, it's, a, it's upon yourself. Yeah, what was school like for you, Mike? Yeah, look, mate, it's probably very similar. For me, I, I clearly remember sitting in classrooms year after year. Um, something that I loved as a, as a young boy and, and um, growing up was football, but soccer, as we call it here in Australia, but football. Um, and I started that from probably three, the age of three, so before I was actually at school. So I loved that game. And I clearly, having, clearly remember having thoughts of sitting in the classroom, looking out the window at the soccer field and the football field and going, I just want to be out there running around, kicking a ball. Mm. Um, and, and it's not that the schooling information, you know, the learning or whatever it is, was uninteresting. There were just other values that I had. Um, at the time, which were of a higher value to me, a, high, a higher context for me that was more important in my life. So I think it's that. I, I th- for me, it's the schooling system is not about whether it's good or bad. It's, it's more about setting you up um, to, to potentially go out and, and pursue things that you want to do, um, but hopefully not restricting you because of potential teachers and their restrictions on themselves. Mm. Um, in life and, and, and their own personal limitations and uh, limiting beliefs of themselves, which mm. they then project onto students or, or children in particular because they just recognize it and they go, oh, this kid's going to struggle. Um, and, and to me, it's, it's, you know, schooling is important and, and viable and, and applicable, in, in, at least in the Western world. Um, but it's not the be all and end all. It's, it's I pro- I probably, you know, moving forward and it's, it's, the ability to go out and succeed in something, but failure as well. You know, going and, and, and getting knocked down and, and having a go and then having people reject you or, or knock you down and tell you're an idiot and, and then just getting back up and going hard and going again. Yeah, yeah. One, one of the things that came up for me there was, uh, you know, when we, are in the, when we are in the educational system, everything is measured in a linear format. Like, uh, and I'm not speaking about the arts because obviously there's uh, there's a lot more to that. Those subjects, for example, mathematics or, or science-based um, subjects or um, accounting, whatever, which is a math-based subject, um, th- there's a there's a right and a wrong way. And even with language, right, the utilization, the correct utilization of, of the English language and how it's written, um, there are rules that govern it. And this uh, limited outlook on life, at least within my experience, was, and you've said this, Mike, it was projected as though if I couldn't play with the rules that were provided, then I wasn't succeeding. And the measure of success was directly related to my ability to uh, be able to repeat the rhetoric, repeat the the... Uh, information so it was more about memorization Mm -hmm. than problem solving which leads on to what you just shared which is it should be the foundational basis of how to think in order to be able to go out in the world and get knocked down and face failure and still be able to think our way through Mm -hmm. figuring out how to solve those problems Uh, and oftentimes kids attribute self-worth and their ability to succeed in life as a reflection of what it is that they've been conditioned to expect through that linear format that is very much the educational model and it's not the case in life it's just not it takes so much more to succeed than just being book smart and and i'm in no way shape or form am i um, trying to reduce the importance of intelligence Like, we're lifelong learners. Mm. All of us in this room are lifelong learners. We've got a commitment to continuously improving ourselves. And 
like we consume content like crazy all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, we are committed to just sharpening the axe all the time so that we can make better decisions, be faster at what we do, be far more effective in our leadership, etc. But the education system didn't teach me that. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I think that that comes from a, just a, an experience of life and, and getting knocked down and, and having to get back up. And it actually it made me, as you were talking there, it jogged back to one of our earlier podcasts, and if not the very first podcast we had, where we were talking about overnight success <laughs> um, and, and how you know everyone talks about, oh, are you successful overnight? And it's like, no. no. <laughs> it, mm-hmm. You know, I think I remember saying something to the effect of, yeah, that, that night happens eventually or that, that overnight success does come, but it takes 20 or 30 years for that night to happen. Um, and similarly to what you were just saying, John, it, it's, it's, it's that experience of, you know what, you just got to go through the failure in life. You just have, it's just going to happen. Whether And ultimately, you're either going to accept that and, and believe that I'm, I'm going to fail and that's okay. Just get back up and, and work through the problem and, and problem solve it. Um, and you still might fail again. Whatever failure means, you know, it's an interesting word, the word mm. failure itself. Um, there's so many connotations to that and, and self-belief things around that. Um, you know, it's just the word as, as, as we know. But it's, it's not necessarily probably the word failure. It's, it's more, okay, well, that didn't, the outcome wasn't as I was expecting. Yeah. Um, yep. so, so the results or the outcome or, or what happened wasn't what I was expecting in yep. my life. Um, and then you may potentially label that as failure yep. um, rather than, well, okay, didn't get the result I want. What's the solution to me now moving forward, which is sort of what you referenced, John. Yep. Um, and, and it's all of that. But know that it's going to continually happen through your life. And, and life doesn't get any easier. It just gets more accountable. Yeah, oh, mm-hmm. dig it just that. gets yeah. more accountable. There's no such thing as an easy life. It's just as you progress, the universe will turn around and go, "Okay, you've progressed. Here, here, here's some more accountability. <laughs> Take that on." Oh, I dig that. I dig that. Yeah, it's like it's it's the ability for us to solve the problems that are inherent in the level that we're at adds the authority that allows us to become more accountable. Hmm. Yeah, you know, and I love what you sh- just shared hmm. around failure not necessarily being failure like it's lessons we're learning yep. we're learning through it and it is feedback and there's no denying it we can experience hurt in life through being timid right and reserved in around the decisions that we make and have a relatively safe and and, and I'll just call it mediocre existence or we can be courageous and we can face the fear and go out there and suck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Like we've all sucked at, at, at stuff. Oh, yeah. um, I still suck at stuff these days. <laughs> yep. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> just saying, just saying. <laughs> like, uh, you know, I, I, I wanted to learn French when I was younger. No, <laughs> that never happened. <laughs> I'm terrible at it. <laughs> But yeah, like I, I wanted to add, so when you're talking about failures, when, when that moment of failure, so whether that, that outcome didn't happen or the decision didn't occur exactly how you wanted it, we've got a choice in life. And this is where we come to, because failures is what allows us to grow. Because if, it, if we just had successes in life, everything would be easy and there's no point to even think. We could have just closed our eyes and just go ahead and do whatever. Uh, but at that moment, we've got a choice. So we, get a, we have a choice to take it on board as a lesson or we have a choice to take it on board as a as a negative and to you know get depressed or upset or all these uh, negative emotions that you can experience and that that will then affect your life and what sort of what sort of life are you going to create moving forward or you embrace it and go yeah but it's a lesson i'm learning okay let's not do the same mistake twice let's not that's the definition of insanity so and let's move forward and, and do it better next time and yeah, that's that's a continual thing that you do in life, in school, in business, mm. in anything that you do. And if you can, you can embrace it in that sense. And let me tell you straight away, it's not easy. Like I, I, I struggle with it from you know day to day. But then you have to continually remind yourself that okay, well, no, okay, yeah, it, it's it's a lesson. Let's learn from it. Let's move forward. But something. You know, eventually gets better and better and better at it as like an inning skill if you keep repeating 
repeating and, and practicing, you'll get better at it. And, and that's, that's what I find that, that's worked for myself. Gary, look, it's, it's it's interesting that you talk about it like that from a success of of comes from the, the internal failure or the, the ongoing failure and the lessons. Mm-hmm. Um, if I can go back, you know, one of the other games that I used to love and another sporting thing that I used to do was basketball. Um, and this was in the mid '90s, so uh, people could probably guess my age now. But um, I was playing, <laughs> I was playing basketball in the mid '90s, and back then. Um, there are a few great players as there are today, but one, I'm sure I'll say the name and everyone will know who he is, and that was uh, Michael Jordan. And um, in the mid-90s or early 90s and then through to the mid-90s uh, with a small gap in between because he went out and did baseball or something, as we know. In golf. Um, <laughs> did, he su- did he succeed at baseball? Uh, no. Well, well, according to him, no. But according to many other people, yes. So, but um, okay. yeah, just yeah, it's he all got it's all professional perception. league. I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, that's yeah. bloody uh, yeah, an accomplishment yeah. in itself. It's uh, you know, it's all perception, really. Exactly. It's, it's all exactly. about perception. But anyway, you know, obviously he was a bit of an idol for me that I looked up to in, in the mid '90s and, and tried to emulate. Same first name, blah blah blah, all that sort of stuff. Um, but years later, years later, he came out with a very pertinent saying which you know i I think is um pertinent for this discussion but for life in particular and he said um the reason i succeeded is because the number of times that i failed or something to that effect Uh, you know was you know that 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 connotation of the only reason i was able to shoot that basket to win the game similar to what you're saying gary is because i missed so many um but when it counted i was able to do it um because i'd missed so many other times and, and failed um, you know, and in sport, it's quite easy to label failure by missing a goal or missing a shot or missing whatever. So it's easy to identify. But, you know, in, in life, it's exactly the same. We, we have to go through the process of the fear. And you were talking about it, John, is not having that fear of failure, um, rather embracing it and saying, you know what, this may not come out as exactly as I planned, but so what? Um, mm. I'm going to get a result of some kind. Um, and it's really only the feedback that you get from others that will affect you. Um, it's more for yourself to go, no, this is, this is what I'm trying to achieve and, and get the results out of. And next time, the result will be more aligned to what you want to achieve and the outcome is more aligned to what you want to achieve. The more you do it, the better you'll get at it. Whatever, again, whatever label better means to you. Yeah, and totally. interestingly, interestingly, Mike, the ability to be able to weather that process is what builds one of the attributes that's been accredi- uh, attributed sorry, to massive success, which is grit. Like the ability to just go again and go again and go again, regardless of how many shots we've missed. Yeah. That in itself is one of the biggest attributes to any, any success in, in life. Um, second to that, because you know, I'm, I'm in my mind. I'm mapping the challenge of the IQ component because we all know he, people who are heap smart, hmm. mm-hmm. who are also limited and restricted in the roles that they play, and they're kind of capped out. They've reached the ceiling in terms of their capacity based on IQ. But the other element to to genuine success in life is EQ. So it's the emotional intelligence that makes such a huge difference. Mm -hmm. So there's a combination of our ability to learn through book smarts, our ability to learn through experience, which is grit, and our ability to uh, be able to manage our personal state as well as read and empathize with those who we work in conjunction with. So it's it is so much more than just looping back to the discussion around the educational system. It's so much more than just our ability to memorise and repeat what it is that's being presented. You know, when you're talking about IQ and EQ, uh, I've got a, a friend who has got an extra, uh, extraordinary IQ, amazing IQ, and he's, he's, doing, he's doing well in his eyes. He's doing, like, very financially, he's, he's fantastic, but he still struggles with some day-to-day challenges, just some general challenges that when I look at it going, oh, that's easy. Like, I, I wouldn't even struggle with something like that. But because he hasn't experienced the failures or the, the other things that I've experienced that have enabled me to grow and, and 
and learn from those moments. He's now going through at a later stage in life where he might not even go through something like that because he's gone he's gone and created a different path of life and people or things have shielded him from that. Yeah, it's a curious thing, uh, Cass, as you were saying that. I was thinking back to all of the mechanisms that I developed as a young kid in order to compensate for my inability to fit within the educational model. Like I learned how to influence outcomes and I learned how to... Um, determine, and also as a result of being raised in um, in an environment where there was conflict and there was um, there there were challenges, and I'm not just talking about like home life. I'm talking about the the area in Melbourne where I grew up. There was just a, a underlying um, consistent presence of the potential for threat mm-hmm. to be there. And so I learned how to how to be street smart. I learned how to identify uh, the mannerisms and the micro movements that were present in other individuals to determine whether they were whether they were a threat to me or whether they were somebody that I could pass by and I wasn't going to get into a conflict with. And it's such an interesting thing because that in its in itself has helped tremendously when it comes to leading people and when it comes to leading outcomes the ability to uh, just loop back and 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 see how that laid a foundation um, in in its compensatory measure for my inability to be super book smart at the time because I just I didn't learn the way that they taught in in the schooling system I've since figured out how to learn effectively which is way better um, <laughs> But back then, uh, the model wasn't a fit. So I had to learn how to compensate. So this loops back to what, what it was that you were sharing just a moment ago. For the individuals who, who succeed in the schooling environment and don't necessarily have to develop the compensatory measures later on in life, some of what it is that others have developed as a result of having to calibrate and balance mm-hmm. isn't present. Exactly. But that's another thing that how we learn. I mean, uh, but you need to have... I think key component to all of this is you need to have the courage to get up and keep moving forward, face your fears, you know, all of those negative emotions, all those ugly stuff that we, you know, we like to, to shy away from generally. And that's that if you can build that courage in yourself to, to keep facing it and dealing with it on a day-to-day basis, you will then learn the skills and it will take you in, in a very far direction. Yeah, look, I, I think it's important. That's a great point because I think it's important for us to share at this point. Um, people will be listening to this and going, yeah, that sounds easy. You guys have been there, done that or, or whatever. you got experience in life, but you don't understand me mm. and you don't know what's going on in my life. And, mm-hmm. and there's truth to that, obviously, right? Yeah. Everyone's an individual. Everyone has their own personal circumstances in life. Um, but the, the empowering thing about hopefully what we're sharing is to go through it, to put yourself in the situation and be brave or courageous, whatever that word is for you, to, to put yourself out there, to experience failure. And again, failure is just a word, but it, whatever that means is, is don't run away from it. Don't, as best as you can, don't sit there and go, I've been through this before, I know what's going to happen, which is sort of comes back to what you were saying earlier, John, where someone's labeled you and you've taken on that label. Um, and you've, you've integrated and going, well, this is me. I, I've labeled myself, I've pigeonholed myself, and this is what I'm going to be for the rest of my life. Um, have the courage to, to face that and, and put yourself out there. And if, if, if it doesn't work out and it doesn't, you don't get the outcome and you so-called fail, then have the grit to get up and go again because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. that's what's going to evolve that emotional intelligence um, and that you know grit, and they're all, they're all related, but it's it's just that ability to go again and go hard, and in effect not be so concerned with what others say about you or what people label you as. Again, in the moment, it's always challenging when you when you're experiencing it. Um, but take time to reflect and go. You know what? I'm going to go again. I'm going to go hard, mm. um, because that's that's what's going to be the differentiator. Because so many people just run away. So many people go. Oh, it's too hard. It's too scary. I don't want to go through that again. Um, and, and then they regret it 10, 20, 30 years from now. Um, but that success comes from pushing through it anyway. 
Mm. And it may not happen straight away. It'll take two, three, 10, 50 times. It doesn't matter. Um, the, the grit and the emotional intelligence will come from just going again. It's interesting, Mike. You know, the you made a point earlier, which was that a lot of people will look in at the conversation and say, yeah, it's easy for you. Like, no one in this room came from privilege. No. No. <laughs> like, far from it. Far, far from <laughs> it. <laughs> far from Not it, you know. Place. Um, and n- no one in this room came from highly stable f- families. Mm, yep. Yep. <laughs> Not me. Yeah. But it's because of that Correct. that we learned the lessons of what not to do mm-hmm. as well as what to do. Yeah. And so there's a, a tremendous amount of gratitude for having been able to go through that process to develop the awareness that we have today. And that's, and that's very much the essence of what it is that you just shared, which is the history isn't an indicator of what the future holds. Yeah. 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 It's just the rite of passage to be able to open up the opportunity with awareness for what it is that we can become. Nice. Mic drop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Good. You know, when, when you did mention that, it, when you were saying like, okay, we, we didn't have a privileged past, we didn't have um, a stable family environment, and it was what enabled us to, you know, to, to learn the lessons. But it was the choice we made though. Yeah. Because you can make at that crossroads, mm-hmm. it could actually take you the other direction as well. Yeah. It could take you in a in a way negative path. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we chose to use it as a growth lesson and mm. of something positive, so that we can then impart, you know, make ourselves better, and not only ourselves but everyone around us, and and so on, so that the lessons was not lost, you know, in history so true uh, yeah it's true but I, I if I may be transparent here I did go down the path of of, of um, victimhood uh, no not quite victimhood self-destruction uh, well yeah a bit of that but nihilism um, <laughs> <laughs> narcissism I guess, keep, keep I guess, going John keep going <laughs> no I, I went down the path of a revenge L- let me put it that way so it was sort of like well if I have to go through this then I'm going to inflict this pain on other people not necessarily physical pain is not what I'm talking about. You know, I didn't go out and beat people up or anything like that. But I became really rude and really arrogant and really hurtful. Yeah. Um, and there were years. It was years. It wasn't just, you know, here a moment here and there. I, I clearly recall in my early 20s, I went, screw the world. Because of how the, the cards I was dealt and the failures I've had in life, well, other people have to go through that too. And I'm going to be the deliverer of that failure um, or that uh, that that insult or that um, w- whatever it is, you know, w- what people have done to me, whatever the perception of done to is, um, mm. I, I, then it's my turn. I want to give that back out. Mm. Um, so I, I spent years. I spent years going through that. And then, then ultimately it came through the other side of, you know what, this is all learning lessons. And even that moment where it, it actually took a guy, without revealing too much what happened, but it took a guy to beat the living crap out of me go you're not doing this crap to me i'm bigger stronger better than you putting you in your place um and it was that moment i clearly remember it where i got beaten to a pulp because i thought i was better and um it was just like a humbling moment we're going you know what it doesn't serve the world to to try and go Mm -hmm. back and forth like this um and it made it about me and it made me really reflect and, and turn around and go you know what yeah and it was a failure point or whatever it is but it was more about, okay, how do I actually serve the world? Um, and I think, th- if I may, the failure is actually serving the world, um, moving forward and, and, and providing a service to the humanity or the world or whatever it is. Um, the only way you can do that is, is going through many routes, many alternatives, and, and going through some failure in life to figure out what it is you're here to do. Because um, that takes time. Mm-hmm. That takes time. I dig it's gold. That. Yeah, I dig that, and it, and it's so, it's so true, in that people are consistently looking for reference points of what it is that they can give themselves permission to do as a result of somebody else shining light on that situation within their own lives. Like they're just we as simple as it might seem. Like we're, we're limitless beings, but we play our roles as though we're limited by 
our own experience. And so we're, we're constantly searching for somebody that bucks the trend, which is why, you know, when, when innovation comes into play and, and disruption comes into play in the marketplace, so many people line up to follow that new thing. You know, I remember when they released the iPhone, you know, when they announced it. I mean, bloody hell, that was disruptive in nature. And it was, <laughs> and at that at that point in time, no, for real. At yeah, that yeah. point in time, like mobile phones were pretty cheesy. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And can you imagine Jobs at the time saying, you know, how many iterations of the first iPhone before it actually came out? How, I wonder how many iterations they had, how many failures, if you yeah. want to call them that, that they had. And imagine if he turned around and went, screw this, too hard, I'm running away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, rather than pushing through, and I'm sure it's not just him, you know, it's the whole Apple organization, but um, at the time, yeah, just imagine, the, 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 you know, it would have been someone else. Uh, eventually it would have come, but um, it would have been someone else. Anyway, so um, we're off to Hong Kong next week, boys. Yeah, we are. We all are, of us yes. this time, all of us, you, come, you guys are coming yeah. along for a trip. And, um, you know, Hong Kong, Singapore, and a few other things. So um, that's progressing nicely. Nicely, nicely. Um, and which which may, and mean, may mean we might not have a podcast next week. We may, it may mean. <laughs> but, but the reason I reference that is I have to say, you know, the, obviously this whole conversation, there have, you know, we've had some successes. And, so, you know, if you've listened to the previous podcast, you would have heard that we've now officially got multiple investors from Hong Kong and set up some great relationships and, and more coming. But that said, there have been many failures. I've had plenty of appointments where people have gone, get lost, I don't want to deal with you, mm-hmm. or, or just ignored me. Um, I've had meetings where I tried to follow up and they've never even been interested to contact. So, you know, you could look at that as saying, oh, that's a failure. It's sort of like, yeah, but you go through the numbers, you just get up and go again. Um, and so it'd be exciting to come back in a couple of weeks, at least for me. Um, to share a little bit more about what we're doing over there and the expansion of that. I always I did mention that um, I'd like to update as we progress through this podcast. It's a good history of, of record. Yeah. Um, but I'm looking forward to having you guys over there and doing yeah. a bit of work. And we are looking doing forward to work. being there, mate. <laughs> yeah. Doing work. a bit of work, yeah. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks very much for uh, joining us today on this podcast. Uh, this has been John, Gary, and Michael. At the Infinity Effect, and if you'd like to subscribe and join us also on our Infinity Effect YouTube channel, please feel free to uh, like and comment and share. And if there's anything that you'd like us to cover on the podcast moving forward, please leave a comment so that we can tag you in and cover that topic. We look forward to joining you in our next episode. Until later. See you guys. See you later. You're listening to the Infinity Effect podcast. For more content, check out our YouTube channel, Infinity Effect, and our Facebook and Instagram pages, Infinity Effect Official.